Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to start a themed reading vlog. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here. If you're new here, I make bookish videos and I'm so excited that you're here. So let's chat a little bit about manga and graphic novels. This is very impromptu. I will say that first off. I don't have any plans for this. I don't know when you're going to see this. I'm starting this on March the 17th and it may be April before you even see this video, but I want to start this and just have it, have it as something I'm working on because I really want the motivation to get some manga read and I feel myself in like a reading slump. <laughs> okay, so I need to just like shift a little bit on my TBR and kind of mood read, I think. I talked about that recently in a vlog anyway. So we're going to see what happens for this video, but um, I'm going to talk about some of the manga books I want to read, why I'm wanting to read them, what's the motivation behind it, and then we'll talk a little bit about some graphic novels, motivations behind that, who I've got recommendations from, all that good stuff. So let's get started. First, let's talk about my journey with manga. Okay, so when I was young, I loved Sailor Moon. Okay, we got Sailor Moon manga on deck. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But I loved Sailor Moon and my brother watched Dragon Ball Z. And like we were huge anime nerds. Okay, loved it. I think a lot of us were. We loved Pokemon. Uh, today we still love Pokemon. What we saying? My kid, my, my hubs, you know, he loves Pikachu, right? And so it was just such a time to be alive to see all those fun TV shows when you come home from school or when you get up early in the morning, honey. That was my jam. Sailor Moon is definitely nostalgic for me. It's just beloved for me. Um, young Amanda just fell in love with the world of Sailor Moon and the characters and just found a lot of it relatable. And my friends in middle school, we had like our own little binder and like we each had our own Sailor Scout that we were in this little book club. Okay, we had like a Sailor Scout club and we all just bonded over this show. And it's just, it's something that I have very fond memories of. And so one thing I'll say is I did start rereading the manga series whenever they started re-releasing these new Eternal editions in recent last two years, I guess. And so I've read the first one and it's still not like the same, right? It's 30, I'm almost 34. So 33, 34 year old Amanda doesn't necessarily feel the same about it as 13 year old Amanda. But I will say I still love the characters, even if there is some content I don't necessarily agree with sometimes. I still really enjoy this series and it's just the nostalgia for me more than anything. And and all that good stuff. So in this video, I will be trying to work my way through at least one Sailor Moon manga because I meant to read this last year and I didn't. And I've already, I'm already up to book six. And it's another goal for me to just be reading things I own. And I do own all six of these. Now, actually, I'll say I own the whole series, like the different collection, a different version as well. It's in my closet, but they're a different translation a little bit. And so this one is supposed to be, I think, a little bit more close to the actual translation from Japan. So I'm excited to dive into this one and see, but that's just really a little bit of my background as far as like what my original love for anime and manga was. I remember I had the old <laughs> Sailor Moon ma mangas from when I was a kid. Who knows where they're at today, right? But it's just a series that's so beloved to me and I really want to try to read book two. Now, y'all, I was Sailor V, Sailor Venus in the book club. Okay, that was my girl. So anyway, <laughs> now... The other motivation for manga that I have for this is, you know, I have this book here that you saw in my spring TBR video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it down below. I don't know when you're seeing this video, so yeah, it's definitely past that video. Um, but Wolf Children. This is a very thick manga that I purchased uh, when one of my friends really enjoyed it, and I've not read it yet. Might have been a couple years ago at this point. So it's one that the hubs picked on my 24 in 2024 video. And it's when I, that's why I put it on my spring TBR. And so I want to go ahead and try to add this in. Let's get started on it, honey. Because it's pretty lengthy. It's who knows when I'll get it done. But that's the motivation behind this one. I've never read anything by this manga uh, author. And so really excited to dive in to that one. And it looks so cute. It looks like a Studio Ghibli type or Ghibli. Whatever you have you say that. Uh, don't, don't quote me, honey. My southern. I can't can't remember how you pronounce anything but I mean I spent my whole life calling manga manga so anyway uh but I just love the way this looks this this art is just beautiful to me we have this on the back I mean it's just so cute so other series that I actually own the entire series of and never read any actually I've read part of this but never finished it was Fruits Basket I know a lot of people love this so I'm excited to kind of dive in and see what I think 
I own every book. I like 12 of these. So I hope I like it <laughs> because I own every one of them, okay? So y'all know how costly that was? Okay, anyway. Um, need to read it. It's in my closet. If I don't love it, need to get rid of it kind of thing. So this is definitely on the list. And I love the illustrations in this one as well. Super cute. So that's the manga. And y'all know that you've seen me over the last two years read like Spy Family, which I'm kind of done with Spy Family now because of some of the content in book nine. So over that a little bit, but I still love Anya. We love baby Anya. I've kind of put that aside. I'm not really going to continue on in that series after book nine. And I did read most of Perfect World, that manga series as well. And that was like up and down for me a little bit. Okay. Had lots of love triangle stuff in it. I didn't love as much. So I don't know, but I still enjoyed it overall, like in the end and stuff. So kind of give me a little background as far as my manga anime journey. I do really enjoy reading manga. I just never really get to it. So I want to try to make this a themed reading vlog so that I can try to force myself to get some of these read, right? Now, moving on to graphic novels. My girl Keisha over at A Book Like You recently did a readathon, and it sounds like something that they, that she's done before and will continue to do probably. So hopefully next time I can participate. But the, she has inspired me to try to pick up some graphic novels. I've only read maybe one or two graphic novels before, maybe three. I just don't remember, honestly. Haven't kept track with that. So I have downloaded some on my Kindle that she recommended. Two of these, I know, she recommended. And then Chrissy is reading one of the other ones that I'm going to read. So, really excited to dive into this. So, I will leave Keisha's uh, vlog down below for her readathon. I think it was Get Graphic. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, girl. But it, I just leave her video down below. It speaks for itself. It was so much fun to watch. And it made me really want to pick up some graphic novels. And so, what's cool about this is you can get graphic novels on Libby through your library if they offer it. So, check your Libby app to see if any are available. But Star Nights is the first one that I'll try. And it's by Kay DeVault. Look how cute this is. The illustrations, honey. I love the art. I love the art. So definitely going to be diving into that. She really enjoyed that one. Keisha did. So, hey, girl, hey, I'm going to be reading it. Okay. And then um, we've got this other one that she, I think, yeah, she read this one in her vlog as well. And it's Ember and the Island of Lost Creatures. At this point, I don't remember where she landed with this. The author is Jason Piment. But, girl, it looks cute. So I'm going to pick it up and see what I think. Right. Let me look at this. We love to see that. So I'm going to do that. And then Chrissy from Chrissy's Purple Library is reading through the Babysitter's Club graphic novel series. She recently did like a read with me video with some ambient water sounds. I'll leave that down below if you want to check it out. Loved it. And uh, she was reading through the graphic novels in that video. So um, yeah, the Babysitter's Club got this on Libby as well. So all the good things. Almost a 10 minute intro here, but uh, hopefully the updates won't be too long. It may, this may be a whole hour, who knows. But I just really wanted to start this to kind of get it going and see kind of where I land with stuff. And when you'll see this, it probably will be sometime in April. But I just feel this slump coming on and I'm definitely going to go ahead and start one of these this week just to kind of throw in some extra reading that's more light and fluff. The illustration aspect because... I don't know. I just feel like I've read so much already this year that I need to take a break. Number one, I need to mood read. I don't need to be so stressed about ARCs. I need to just, you know, be reading my Bible too and throwing that in, you know, doing some of that work, you know, that Bible reading, getting into Word like I need to be doing more often. And so, you know, probably April, May, even my own readathon month of May, it will take us to have a step back a little bit bare minimum. I may not even complete all the prompts, but you know, it's just something that I really need to refocus a little bit because I go all in at the beginning of the year a lot of the times and with my reading and I had all these arcs I need to finish and now that that's kind of coming to a close a little bit getting more manageable I want to try to hone in on what I'm reading versus and reading off my shelves like I said uh from that TBR video y'all know y'all know the spring TBR honey was mostly stuff I owned and uh, with the exception of maybe some book club reads and things like that but try not to worry about any of this reading stuff so yeah this is gonna be a fun video I think and yeah we'll just go from here and see what happens by the end okay so yeah um, I'm excited for you to jo join me along this reading manga and graphic novel journey okay I'll update you guys as soon as I have some reading updates
Hey y'all. All right. It's been a while since I've updated this vlog, so let's get at it. Okay. It's been maybe two weeks. Forgive my background for any mess, but you know, life be laughing. So first off, I want to talk about two graphic novels that I have read so far. And I tried to put some illustration clips in here as I was reading through some of them. The first one that I read was Star Nights by Kay DeVault. The recommendation from Keisha over at A Book Like You. Actually, I think both of those graphic novels I'm about to talk about our recommendations from her from her channel and so first off let me just say star nights was so beautiful i love the illustrations the artwork is just so beautiful the colors everything about it i loved it i'm so glad i read this i don't read a lot of graphic novels as y'all seen so this was just such a new fun experience for me also i was kind of feeling a little bit of burnout from reading so many middle grade books which these are technically middle grade graphic novels and so i think i was feeling burnout from all of my tbr things like things i felt like i had to read arc books <laughs> march mystery madness like everything and so this was such a nice just break up for everything that I had been reading to just sit down and read a fluffy like graphic novel and so yeah I love dipping my toes into reading some graphic novels this last couple of weeks and this one was definitely five stars uh, this is so cute it's about this simple frog who wants to be like this legendary knight uh, he finds himself on this unexpected magical journey I loved it it was so cute the characters in this are a lot of fun you have just these really sweet themes of being true to yourself and the importance of friendship and it was just so great. So it's content for parents. I like to try to mention this. I still don't really know where I'm at with trying to mention these things at times, but um, I do want to mention, I guess, since it's technically it's the middle grade, it didn't bother me at all. Like I didn't have any issues with it, but there are some mentions of like spirits, mild fights, magic, and one character who's a witch, but it really was like very light and it wasn't anything I was personally uncomfortable with, but it's, I guess it just felt more like part of this like fantasy world to me, but I just want to mention for care, for parents who want more of that, those content notes, right? But overall, it was just so much fun. It was precious and it just, I don't know, it just had my heart. So I really want to try to read more graphic novels, especially after reading this one. It was so much fun. And I read was Ember and the Island of Lost Creatures. And this was so much fun. I gave this one four stars, like 3.5 to four stars. There was like a lot of great fun facts about creatures and different things in this world. So that was a lot of fun to kind of see. The illustrations again were so beautiful. This one is all about this kid named Ember, a tiny boy who lives alone with the City of Giants, we'll say. Um, but his luck ends up changing when he meets Lua. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Lua? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it, Lua is a kind sea turtle who leads him to the island of the lost creatures. Go all the way across the ocean for this school that's there. And the story kind of goes on from there. Amber is having some pretty rough days the first little bit he's there, but things kind of just take a turn for him. And he really learns so much about the animals, the, uh, the area. He starts making friends and it was just I don't know, it's just really cute. So I don't really have much more to say other than I really like this one as well. It teaches you about friendships and things like that. And it's also a middle grade. I, I would classify it as that. So I ended up borrowing these actually from the Libby app from my library. So definitely check, see if your Libby app has any like graphic novels because I didn't really want to purchase these because I didn't know how I would like get on with them since they are graphic novels and I'm not used to reading a lot of those. So I would definitely love to own the first one I read. <laughs> the uh, Star Nights because it was just gorgeous. I could see myself returning to that. It was so much fun. Um, and so, yeah, the next ones on my list though for this vlog or whatever this is at this point are Sailor Moon book two, a manga. And then of course, Wolf Children uh, is another manga. And then of course, we've got Fruit Basket. So I guess all three of these are manga. What am I saying? <laughs> so I have manga for the rest of this vlog. If I pick up any more graphic novels, I will let y'all know, of course. But I just wanted to give an update for this vlog since it's been a little bit. This kind of lighting looks weird because I feel like I'm sunburnt just a little bit. So anyway, <laughs> forgive me for any craziness of the way I look. But editing Amanda here to tell y'all I forgot I got to read the Babysitter's Club. So I'll read some manga. We'll come back to the Babysitter's Club after some manga. How about that? <laughs> I cannot believe I forgot about the Babysitter's Club. So I'm going to read that today. And I'll get that to y'all after the Sailor Moon reading. How about that? <laughs> so that's kind of what I have for the rest of this vlog. Not a lot of content yet so far, but I hope that you're enjoying it. And maybe this will kind of encourage you to kind of step outside your reading box, you know, to try some manga or try some graphic novels or whatever, just so you can see what's out there that you might be interested in as well. So it's just a lot of fun to kind of break it up, your normal reading up with things like this. For me personally, just because, like I said, I was kind of feeling slumpy. And I think these are really good stories that can kind of break you out of your reading slump sometimes as well. So that's it for right now. And I'll update you guys as soon as I read some more of these books.
right, y'all. So, I am going to give an update. You may have seen me in the same outfit when I was giving an update for the women. Okay, I don't know when you're going to actually see the women vlog versus this vlog. So, working on two vlogs at once, actually, right now. But, uh, so, this is another update for the separate vlog for this one. Okay. So, um, Sailor Moon, I did finish this one, book two, in the series. And, y'all, I'm so surprised with how different I think about this thing. <laughs> it's nostalgia for me, truly. Like, I've said to y'all in this vlog that it was very... I'm just a nostalgic series, anime, manga series for me. Young 13-year-old Amanda loved it. And I initially thought this was going to kind of be like a four-star, but I sat with it for a little bit. No, this is more like a two and a half to three. So, I put three on Goodreads. And, you know, rereading this series as an adult, there's just still, there are still some things that make me giggle and smile. You know, our main girl, Usagi, um, or Serena, that they said in the, in the anime, if you're familiar with that, however you want to say it. Sailor Moon, <laughs> the main character Sailor Moon and her friends are on Earth and they're trying to save Earth as Sailor Scouts. That's the whole point of this, right? Is like, they're these Sailor Scouts. They're our first books, like identifying who each, each Sailor Scout is. You know, we have our main five girls here and then we have girls later on that show up as the other planets. But they're each like Sailor, Sailor Moon, Sailor Venus, Mercury, Mars, and Jupiter. They're the main five, okay? And then we have Luna, who is her talking cat. And then we have Artemis, who is Sailor Venus's cat. Okay, there you go. There's the squad, okay? The, and the, those characters, like, on Earth and in those scenes, they make me laugh. You know, I love that they are working together to save the Earth and, like, all that stuff. And I love, like, the backstory of them on the moon and that sort of stuff. The artwork, it's amazing. It's probably my favorite artwork from any manga series. Now, all that said, <laughs> there are things in this that just made me cringe. First off, I talked about this about the first Sailor Moon book, but it still bothers me that Tuxedo Mask or Mamoru, whatever, Endymion, he's got many names. Okay, her, her main guy, Tuxedo Mask, most of y'all know who that is if you know Sailor Moon. Him and Sailor Moon are a thing, okay? They have a huge past together. It's a, it's a whole thing. He's like a man of the earth. She was the lady of the moon. And, like, they came together and they fell in love. That's kind of whole, their whole story. And, like, they worked together to save the earth from all the evil stuff. That's fine. But, like, it's just some of the intimacy between them is weird. Because, like, he's 18 or 17, 16, 17, 18-ish. And she's 14. And, like, that whole, like, I don't know. That just, like, I don't know. I, I'm just going to say I don't like it. I wish they were closer in age. I wish she was a little older. But... I know this was written in the 90s. It was a little bit different time. And the culture is different in Japan when it comes to manga. You know, I've seen this done several times. And, like, the way that they did college age was different than here in the United States. So, those are some things to think about. But, personally, it's just, like, a little icky sometimes. <laughs> okay? The way it's portrayed. Especially more so in the anime series, I guess. Um, he just feels so much older than her sometimes, you know? And she's just so obsessed with him that it's like she just throws all her responsibilities to the wayside. Of course, she is a crybaby. That's her trait, right? But her and her friends kind of got to reel her back in. Like, girl, let's get going. Like, let's do this. But it just bothers me at times to see some of those things. Like, especially like he's a young girl reading this. Like, what was my... What did I take away from it? I guess I should say. Um, <laughs> you know, like, what was the influence from that? And it also bothers me that there is, like, a suicide scene in this from their past. Or even, not, not even remember the past. I guess it was their past. But, like, it's redepicted in this. And it just, it's, it's like, in relation to their 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 relationship, I guess. And I've just, I've forgotten a lot about this series. And so, those sort of things make me cringe. I also really don't like that there's a storyline, and a lot of us didn't like this. And I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember. So, you see this right here. This scene happens where this is, like, their kid, okay, from, like, the future. She comes down from the moon, and she ends up, like, crashing on her head, and, like, their lips locked. Well, he's her daddy. No, let's not do that, <laughs> okay? He's her daddy from the future, okay? Let's not do that. <laughs> so, moving on. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's eye-opening for me as a 33-year-old, or soon to be 34-year-old, like, things I'm like, what? <laughs> but I say so common in manga sometimes. So, like, where am I going to land with this? I don't know. Like, I don't necessarily recommend this for young readers. I just don't because of a lot of these things I say. The whole point of this is the Sailor Scouts are these warriors based on the planets. And there's, so there's a lot of astrology that plays into this as well. You know, it hasn't that hasn't really bothered me much. Now, Rey, Sailor Mars, she has a lot of like this Shintoism type stuff where it's like psychic abilities and she can see into the future. I don't love that. I don't think I've ever loved that. It's always a bit dark for me personally. So I'm like, I don't really care for that. And... There is reincarnation mentioned in this as well. So, 
because like these Sailor Scouts are like rebirthed into their new life and now they're remembering their past and their previous lives. So all of those things, it's not, it, the more I talk about it, it's really like two and a half. Like, did I even need to put three? But like, this book two was just a no. So I'll be interested to see if I really want to continue on to book three. The conviction was just hitting for me personally in this a little bit. The more I think about it, you know, there it's just hard because when you have something that's so tied to nostalgia for you personally, it's a bit tough when you go back to it and some of the content bothers you and it's like, no. And would I let my kid read this? No. When I have let my 13-year-old read this, looking back, I shouldn't have been 13-year-olds even reading this, personally. Just because of some of the things that may seem innocent, but they're really not, you know? So, there's that. Um, six minutes talking about that. Why? But anyway, so now, I've got these two, and I'll be very interested to see where I land with both of these. I really hope I like Fruits Basket, because I own all of them. And will I get rid of my Sun and Moon books? Will it be another Outlander moment? I don't know. <laughs> But I just, I, I will try to read book three again and kind of continue on and see where I'm at with stuff. But just some of those things, just the red, it was like red flag all over. So, and then I got to read Wolf Children. So we're going to continue on in this vlog, kind of seeing where I end up with some things in these two books. Uh, we're almost at April at this point. So I've been like working on this for like three weeks now. So I'm just like, where am I going to get to? But I really want to just get these done. Use this as an incentive to get things in that I own. Because if I don't love this, I can get rid of it. If I don't love this, I'm, I, I, can, I have a whole series I can get rid of, right? So there's some things. These things, these books right here, these are this whole series is just sitting in my closet. Same thing with the Sailor Moon. And I've been collecting the new editions too. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't think I need to be. So we'll just wait and see kind of where I end up with things. I don't really know. I'm just talking out loud more than anything to try to process through how I feel about the Sailor Moon because those are just like immediate thoughts I have and maybe I'm being too critical. Maybe I'm being too harsh because it's meant to be a light fluffy series. I actually know it's not. It's not meant to be light and fluffy. <laughs> there are hard things going on that these girls are going through, right? Like, but like back then it's like, you, these were like girl power type stories and it's like, is it? <laughs> they were obsessed with boys and I remember being so boy obsessed and I think this is part of the influence. I don't know. So we'll just keep processing through all of that, right? But anyway, I will get back to you guys as soon as I have updates on these right here. So yeah. ending clip because I forgot to talk about the manga clip that you see next after this and completely forgot to talk to you about the babysitters club I went to go edit the video and I'm like where's the clip oh I didn't talk about it <laughs> so the babysitters club I absolutely love this I gave it four stars it was so cute I uh, love the characters I felt very much nostalgia from this reading the books many years ago when I was a kid you know this is just so much fun and like just seeing these girls like form this little club and talking back and forth and working through just different scenarios and how they're gonna like have schedules and you know working things out with their parents and wanting to help other people but then like they kind of get in little arguments here and there and trying to resolve that it was so so cute and um you know then apologizing to each other when things you know don't go so well you know just like doing the right thing. I really like that. And there are these very sweet young girls with this great friendship and I can't wait to see what happens next and because I've completely forgotten about this like so much fun. and there's a lot of things that they're dealing with you know we've got you know one of the girls has a divorced parents and is going to be remarrying um, someone and she doesn't really know how to feel about that. The other girl has some health stuff going on and they're trying to figure out what's going on with her and um, just all these different things with like siblings and all these things so it is just so so much fun to kind of see them in their lives. It's definitely like coming of age stories it feels like it's going to be so the graphic novel detail is so cute. I try to put a little clips in there before this clip 
so you kind of see the details there but I got this from my library I don't own these I'm not gonna buy these but um I definitely would recommend them I think they're a lot of fun especially for young girls and uh yeah I can't wait to see what happens next with our girls here because it was so much fun just to see them like form this club and like the nostalgia from like the the landline bone and all this stuff I was like <laughs> yes girl <laughs> so much fun and like just families around the table like <sighs> Bring that back, right? That's pretty much all my thoughts on the graphic novel for the Babysitter's Club. Definitely going to continue on in the series. So thank you, Chrissy, from Chrissy's Purple Library for recommending this. I definitely want to continue on. They are on my Libby app, so I'm so excited to keep reading these on my uh, Kindle app and all the good things there. Definitely check these out if you're interested. So yeah, without further ado, let's cut to the final clip of this vlog. <laughs> all right, y'all. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is the best way I know how to put the end of this video. I look crazy. I need to wash my hair. Ignore me. It's a whole thing. But you hear a little man. He's running around. But I want to give y'all an update on where I'm at with some mangas. This is the last clip. Finally. I've been doing this forever. <laughs> We're going to miss for weeks. But I want to talk about Fruits Basket. I want to talk about Wolf Children. And thoughts I have about manga and where do I go from here okay ignore the messy kitchen okay we had crumble cookie y'all see that pink box you know yeah. all right <laughs> you can hear it, little man it'll be just family noise how about that Blake just went and got his hair cut so he's on his way back but first up this whole thing with fruits basket y'all I'm so disappointed I know this is beloved it's not for me I own all 12 books and I didn't I didn't have this one <laughs> So I will be putting these for sale on Pango Books. They're brand new too. Anyway, I really thought I was gonna like this. I think I remember reading the part of the first one and liking it many, many, many years ago. And like, oh yeah, I'm gonna like that. That'd be like a Sailor Moon or whatever. No. <laughs> so the reason I did not love this Fruits Basket is this manga here, which before I even start talking about this, I actually did love wolf children so take me with a grain of salt okay but this manga right here has a lot of like chinese zodiac stuff like the kids sorry we're shaking here little man's on the table this is like falls <laughs> victim of what I, the reason i am struggling with manga lately is it's like almost i don't know it's the content <laughs> It's just like the conviction I had in this. I probably quit um, halfway. And I just, this thing, what am I even saying? So in this one, we have this girl in Taru Honda. And she's, her mother had passed away. And so she's in the woods and she is staying in this tent. And these guys see her staying in the tent on their property. And when she hugs them, it's so funny because, like, it was funny because she when she hugs them or when any person of the opposite sex hugs the men, they turn into a animal <laughs> of the Chinese zodiac. It just wasn't for me. I don't know. There was just something about it I just wasn't into. You can see here, like, she hugged them and they turned into a cat or like an animal. Like here they all are. They're all animals. And when after they're all animals. What? <laughs> I was like, okay. In the buff. Um, I don't know. It's just like, what? So, I don't know. She ends up like staying there with them. And I just, I don't really want to read this. I just don't think it's for me. The, it had a lot of this Chinese zodiac, almost like astrology type stuff that I just wasn't really into either. And yeah. I uh, also read online that something about another age gap romance with the kid. And, like, I think one of them might be really young. The other might be an adult age. I can't remember if that's 100% or not. There's a lot of this in manga, like, icky stuff <laughs> that I don't know, again, if it's culture. But this also reads very young for me. So, you know, kind of like Sailor Moon, I'm having some of the same feelings about these mangas. And so, I don't know where I go from here with manga. Like... It's so interesting, kind of like I said in that vlog on Monday. Like, I don't know. It's just very interesting to, like, step back and say, wow, I've really changed a lot. Because I used to love anime, love manga. And I probably still could like some anime and manga. Because I did really like Wolf Children, okay? This one actually was really good. But it's going to be, like, a journey for me to really find ones that I enjoy. I think 
I, I just think, number one, this is too young for me. And some of the content in here, I'm not a fan of. Maybe that's the best way to say it. So, but let's just talk about Wolf Children really quick before we end this. So, this one is sad, but so cute at the same time, if it makes sense. So, this is about these kids. And, well, first off, the moms right here, okay? Here's the mom. And you know really quickly that the dad passes away. I mean, it's really, to me, that's not a spoiler. Like, it's very, very fast. So, she is a single mom raising her two kids. And he was a wolf. They fell in love. The mom and him fell in love. And they had children. And he passed away, unfortunately. And so, she's just a single mom raising her kids. And trying to, like, make sure nobody knows that the kids are wolves. And, you know, letting the children kind of make their own path of, like, do they want to be human being or, or primarily, or are they going to want to be more like in the wild, a wolf? And just seeing this journey of these kids, it's just, the artwork is really good. And the story itself was just sweet. Like, it's funny, like, you have like little scenes like this where like, they're like tearing things up like animals, you know, and it's just, it's cute. But then you have some like very emotional scenes with like the family and like people helping her out she moves like from a far away area and like the people around help her kind of get on her feet and like she this man is like helping her um with farming and stuff and i don't know i i really liked it seeing um the girl go to school and the boys kind of trying to figure out his life as a wolf and you know seeing the path that they make so i really did like this one i'm gonna give this one four stars uh wolf children this is also a 24 and 24 that i needed to read uh, because <laughs> this is one that Blake picked. So, yeah, look at me finishing a book. And this actually was a very quick read. It's mostly illustrations, I would say. Like, I mean, there's just not a lot of words on the page and stuff. So, um, yeah, content-wise, there was only a couple things I didn't love. But overall, I still really enjoyed it. And I uh, get four stars. And it was heartwarming overall. So, this one is probably more that I would like to read. It doesn't have any of that weird, icky stuff. Like, with the kids and it's like almost like spy family stuff as well you know like i told y'all spy family had some of that you know content that i just was not here for that was inappropriate for kids that i'm just like i can't you know it's just it's too much and i i really don't even know if i'm going to continue on in sailor moon i need to kind of like just pray about it and kind of see where the lord leads me in it because you know some of this stuff it's like i don't want to excuse it holy spirit's like in you and just like convicting you of things that you're reading like i just gotta put it down you know <laughs> little man <laughs> running around in his diaper so blah bye blippy blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he loves blippy but that's just kind of where i'm at right now with stuff you know i'm really trying to just figure out what kind of manga i might like to read the graphic novels were fun though i'm definitely going to continue on in the babysitters club ones and um, maybe I'll test the waters with some other mangas and try to see. I don't think I'm going to buy them. Like, that's not going to happen. I'm going to either get some digital ones from the library, and if they don't have them, I don't know, maybe the library even has some I could borrow physically, but I am not buying them because they're expensive. You know, I probably paid 10 to $12 a piece for these, and now I have to get rid of them. So, whatever. It is what it is. And so, if anybody does want them, they'll be linked. I'll link my Pango store, but... For the most part, it's just not for me. And this is like, I've been a really fun experiment just to try to see what I enjoy in graphic novels and manga. And it's just been a mixed bag of everything. And so, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's very different than what I normally do. But, you know, I'm really, like I said, trying to read stuff off my shelf. And like, I, these have been in my closet for a year or two. And I'm like, probably two years, actually. It definitely is two, maybe even three, who knows. I got to get rid of these, y'all. So, um, now that I'm like, kind of put that one away, put that to bed, <laughs> I will be keeping wolf children though. This was very cute. I can see myself going back to this at some point. So yeah, love this. and apparently this is like an animated thing or something. I think there's an anime of this. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I may be completely wrong. I saw some comments about that somewhere. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's very different <laughs> than what I normally do. But I'm just trying to kind of fit things in with my content the best way I can. I'm still, like, um, health-wise, I'll kind of tell y'all, I've been having lots of stomach issues over the last year and a half. So, I'm finally getting, like, a referral to a GI doctor. And after having some just major issues the last three weeks, I have got to go to the doctor, have blood work done, you know, doing some other testing. And just going to pray that everything's okay. But I need to figure out what's going on with my stomach. <laughs> All right.
All right. <laughs> so, anyway, that's kind of what's going on there. But uh, just any prayers y'all have, you want to pray for my health and stuff, pray that it's okay. I'm sure it's fine. But, you know, I did have a brain cancer when I was 23. So, I just, I need to really, like, pay attention to my body and anything that's not right. I don't think anything's cancer, right? But, like, that makes me nervous. And so, I always want to make sure that I take care of myself. And I've been putting this off for, like, a year with the stomach stuff I've been having. So, maybe even longer. So, that's kind of the update since that last vlog or the vlog before where I said I wasn't feeling good. Might even been my end of month wrap up. I don't even know where I'm saying I wasn't feeling good. I can't remember. But, um, so, yeah. Just praying that, you know, everything goes well with all the testing and stuff. So, I appreciate any prayers y'all have. And if you need any prayer, please let me know at any time in the comments. Or you can message me privately on Instagram, that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, that's it for this video. Next week, we'll probably have some, maybe another vlog. I'm just, you know, really busy at work right now. So, vlogs are working for me really well right now. So Southern Charm Read on book recommendations for each prompt. That will come next week as well. And who knows what else. So, I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Let's chat below down in the comments as always if you made it this far. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next video. Bye, y'all.